Section 3, Crosstabs and SQL Queries. In this section, we are going to look at Crosstab in detail, Nested Crosstab, Discontinuous Crosstab, Examining Queries, and Overriding SQL Queries. Crosstab in detail. In my opinion, Crosstab is the most useful and versatile data container. In this video, we are going to take a look at Crosstab in detail and learn about what it is made up of and how we can customize it. We are going to take a look at Crosstab and its components, changing properties of nodes, facts, and crosstabs, and sorting an item based on a different item. So here is our sales dashboard, which is a dashboard style report in edit mode. I hope that by now you are getting a hang of quickly switching from one page to other page by going into Page Explorer and then drag the required items from data sources onto the page. So let's now go to our second page called Channels and Promotions. So on this page, I want to create a cross tab and show the sales effectiveness of various sales channels or order methods and sales promotions. For that, from data source perspective, I'm going to use another package called go data warehouse so let's add a data source by clicking on the plus button and from team content samples models choose go data warehouse query and click open now click on the toolbox and from data container drag a cross tab on the page we will let it create a new query for this cross tab data container and we'll call it q underscore channels promotions we'll go to the data source and open up go data warehouse sales and marketing folder and sales query my reason of picking this different data model is because this data model has the information about order method and sales promotion as well, which was not available in the sales specific framework model. So I don't see promotions information here. So let's start with first dragging years and months for which we will expand time query subject and drag year on the columns. And under the years, I want to drag month caption. On the rows, let's drag order method, which are email, fax, mail, sales visit, etc. In the intersection, we are going to show the sales quantity figures. For that, open sales fact and drag quantity in the intersection. So essentially, now Cognos is showing me the sales quantity for each of the order methods or channels as we call it over the months of various years and the idea is to show the comparison of the channel effectiveness so let's now see what is this cross tab made up of and how to customize each component in order to do that we'll click on this show properties button on top right and we will start with selecting the months. Now notice that I'm seeing these elements because I am in the page preview mode. If you are in page design mode, you will see a view like this. So it will show me that I've dragged month caption data item, but it will not show me the values of month caption. In most of the scenarios, you would be better off selecting page preview, especially if every time you make a change to the report, if it is not taking too long for the data source to return you the numbers. In that case, you would be better off using page preview. But if the data source takes time, imagine that you're, you are pulling data from your organizational data warehouse, which is really large, or complicated and every time generating preview takes long time in that case you may want to stick to page design so essentially our cross tab is made up of three components 
rows edge column edge and the intersection so when i select a month from columns it's called cross tab node member and i can make changes to the properties of the cross tab node member which will apply to all the members on this level of the columns so the first thing i want to do is i want to change the sorting order of the months to be based on the month key rather than being alphabetic in order to do that i need to pull month key in the query as well but how do i know which query this data container is connected to in order to do that i need to first select the whole cross tab container and i can do it two ways either by clicking on the container selector here which looks like those three dots in the corner or i can use this drop down to select the ancestor of cross tab node member and select cross tab in the cross tab property i can see that the query that is linked to this data container is called q channels promotions so i'll go into query explorer by clicking on the queries button here and then open q channels and promotions here i want to pull month key from data source let's go back to our report page click on the months again and now change the sorting property and double click on month key to add it to the sort list and by default it is in ascending order for any reason if you want to change the sorting to descending, you can do it by clicking on this button. In this case, ascending works for me. And hit OK. And we can see that the months are now sorted properly, starting from January, ending at December. Similarly, I can select years, which is cross tab node member, and I can change various properties of this level of columns for example sorting data format border background color foreground color etc and i can also do the same for the members on the rows next let's click on the fact cells or the intersections here when i click anywhere on the intersection the cross tab intersection is selected and it is showing me the properties of the fact cells in this case i want to change the data format now remember the cross tabs are only useful to show numerical figures for example if you had textual data like commentary you cannot use cross tab to show the textual information that varies from cell to cell I can pull some text here, which will be then common across all the cells, but I cannot have textual data in the intersection. So let's change the data formatting for the numerical figures, which in this case are sales quantities. If it was revenue or gross profit, I could select currency and then i could select which currency symbol to display and then change various properties related to currency data format in our case it is just a number so i can choose if i want to display decimal places how many decimal places to be shown if i want to scale them by thousands I can do that by selecting minus three scaling or if I wanted to show the numbers in millions I will select minus six scaling I can change the negative sign symbol from minus to 
various other options like showing the negative figures in bracket or showing these symbols for negative numbers. I can also change whether to show thousand separator or not. And in this case, wherever there are missing items, I want to show zero. So I'll mention that missing value character should be zero. So if I now scroll to right, I will see that all the missing values are now replaced with zero. Lastly, let's also look at the properties at the cross tab level itself. So I have selected cross tab by clicking on the container selector this time. And I now see that there are these cross tab level properties. The first one I want to bring to your attention is called rows per page. If my cross tab is going to fetch a lot of rows, I can control how many rows are displayed per page. So hypothetically, if I change it to three rows, just to show how it will look like, we can now see that only three rows are displayed per page. In order to see the next three rows, I need to click on page down. So I'll change it back to 20. I can also suppress rows and columns which are not having any data by enabling zero suppression. So I have options to say suppress the rows and columns where all items are either zero, missing, divide by zero, or overflow values. Generally, zero and missing values is the commonmost selection. And hit OK. So if I had any month or any order method which is not having any value, it will be hidden or suppressed. One more important property at the cross tab level is called pagination. So our cross tab is very wide. And if I export this to PDF, this will not be fitting one page. Let's see that by running it in PDF. So this is our page one. And we can see that on second page, it is only showing me from January to August. In September onwards, another six months are displayed on the next page and so on. So it has broken down the cross tab horizontally and it is showing it as separate tables. But this can create confusion. And if you want to force to fit all the columns onto one page, you can do that by changing the pagination property and untick allow horizontal pagination. Click OK. And if I run PDF again, I can now see it has reduced the font size of the cross tab in order to fit all the columns on one page. So let's summarize what we have learned. Cross tab is made of rows, columns, and intersections. When you drag an item on rows or columns, node members are created. You can change their properties, for example, sorting order. You can drag a measure type data item in the intersection to show numerical information. And you can change its data format from properties. At cross tab level also, you can control many properties like pagination, rows per page, and zero suppression.